All right, so one more example here of graphing a rational function. Um, and here I'm going to graph x squared plus 4x over x squared minus 16. So the first thing I'm going to do um, in this case is factor the numerator. Notice we could pull an x out. We have x plus 4 left over as our other factor. And notice the denominator factors as x minus 4, x plus 4. So, okay, so one thing that's kind of sticking out to me at this point is obviously we've got this x plus 4 and this x plus 4. So I'm going to cancel that out. And really I'm left with x over x minus 4. Um, again, a couple things. Notice if we look at the very original function, x squared plus 4x over x squared minus 16, this would be um, h of x would be undefined when the denominator equals 0. And we could add 16 and take the square root. And that would say it's going to be undefined when x equals positive 4 or when x equals negative 4. Okay, So again, uh, the domain of this simplified version, again, the domain now is all reals except um, x equals positive or negative 4. And again, I'm going to make a little, uh, a little, a little realization here um, as to whether these at x equals positive four and negative four, am I getting vertical asymptotes or am I getting holes in the graph? So notice if we plug four into the original function, we would get four squared, which is sixteen, plus four times four, which is another sixteen. We would get thirty-two over zero. So something non-zero over zero that tells me there's a vertical asymptote. So a vertical asymptote at x equals positive 4. But notice if we plug in negative 4, well, then we would have negative 4 squared, which is 16 minus 16. We would get 0 over 0. And that, to me, again, tells me there's a hole in the graph um, at x, the x-coordinate of negative 4. So again, I really what it boils down to is I think I'm going to graph this function x over x minus 4. Um, but again, I need to realize that there's a, a hole at this, at this x coordinate of negative 4. I think this is the part people forget. Um, other than that, if you graph x over x minus 4, you'll be in good shape. So let's see, we said we had a vertical asymptote at positive 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's our vertical asymptote, x and y. Um, let's see, notice, OK, so if we were to go back um, to this function x over x minus 4, if we plugged negative 4 in, so let's see, I'm thinking about x over x minus 4. Notice if we plug negative 4 in, well, we get uh, negative 4 in the numerator. We get negative 4 minus 4. That's negative 8, uh, which reduces to positive 1 half. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, so at negative 4, it says we're going to be, so there's positive 1. It says we're going to be at the point, there's going to be a hole at the point 1 half. So negative 4 comma 1 half. And now I'm just going to do a few other things to help me graph this function. Um, Notice if we plug in x equals 0, we would get y equals 0. Okay, So I know it goes through the origin. So um, again, thinking about x-intercepts, that's when uh, y is 0. So if we make 0 on the left, well, again, that would tell me that x equals 0. Notice, again, this has multiplicity of 1, which means my function has to just simply um, cross through uh, at this point, 0, 0. Remember, if it has even multiplicity, it bounces off. Um, if it has odd multiplicity, it'll go through the graph at that point. Okay. Notice we can also think about hor a horizontal asymptote, maybe to help us uh, get a little bit better graph. And remember, if the degree of the numerator, which is 1, is equal to the degree of the denominator, in this case, which is also 1, we take the ratio of the leading coefficients. So in this case, our horizontal asymptote will be the y value of 1. So I'm going to stick that on there as well. 
And honestly, at this point, I think we've got enough to help us graph the function. Um, again, I know this has to be a vertical asymptote. From this point to this point, the only thing that can really happen is, again, there's a hole here. But after that, the graph starts. It can't cross and come back through, because then we would have found another x-intercept. So I know the graph comes through. Um, it crosses through. And since it can't cross again, it has to just simply go down to negative infinity there. So it'll just go straight down to negative infinity. And then on the left, uh, to get to this horizontal asymptote, it's just going to have to approach it. That's really the only thing that could happen. And you can plot some points to see it's not doing anything, you know, it's not bouncing around in this little region. Okay, same thing, I think. Well, okay, I know we've got, we could start plotting points. You could plug in 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and evaluate them. But again, kind of the way I think about it is, to me, typically for these rational functions, either your graph's going to be sort of below it or it'll be above it. Um, it can cross the horizontal asymptote. Um, that does happen for... Uh, for rational functions, but again, just in terms of a rough sketch, I know it wouldn't be down, you know, sort of in the bottom right, because then to get to this horizontal asymptote, it would have to cross the x-axis, which means we'd have another x-intercept, but we don't have any other x-intercepts. The only x-intercept is at zero, so I would conclude that the graph is probably just going up and then leveling out at this horizontal asymptote, and now I've got a, a, a basic graph. Um, so it looks like x over x minus 4. Um, again, uh, we, we've got our vertical asymptote at positive 4. And again, even though negative 4 is okay in this simplified formula, um, we have to take into account the very original that it came from. And, and that one, uh, again, negative 4 makes it undefined. We get 0 over 0, so that's why we put our hole in the graph at that point.